To start off this build, previously I completely pillar bedded and bedded the stock. I then used a coking saw to cut out the cheek riser. This idea I got from zombie head hunters. Using materials I had laying around, I found a railroad spike. I cut it out square as possible, sanded it down, then measured on my stock where I wanted it. Even though I had access to a milling machine, I wanted to see if I could complete this project with common household tools. So I went out to my drill press in the backyard and drilled two 3 8 holes 2 inches apart. I then used my angle grinder with a cutting wheel and slotted it between the two holes. I then drilled between the two holes all the way through a quarter inch hole and recessed it for an allen wrench bolt. Using common 3 8 inch rod that you can usually pick up at Home Depot, I went ahead and measured and cut out the length I wanted for my cheek riser. I then measured carefully where I wanted it on the cheek riser and epoxied it in place. Then cut out the length that I wanted for adjustment, then cut off the rest of the threads on the quarter inch bolt and added a nut. Afterwards, I carefully chiseled out the stock and made it a really snug fit. The rifle stock was sanded down, and then I used steam to bring out the gouges and scratches as much as possible. To bring out the natural grain of the walnut stock, I used natural Danish oil, which gave it a good finish. The action was then disassembled using a homemade barrel vise out of hard pine wood with a 3 quarter inch hole drilled out. So here's a quick tip. If you have emery cloth laying around with a non-slip back surface, Cut out a couple strips to put the sandpaper face down. Put the emery cloth with the non-slip surface in between the barrel and the barrel vise. This will give a really good grip to knock loose that barrel nut. This particular barrel nut had a notch for an adjustable 1 inch spanner wrench. I used that adjustable spanner wrench and gave it a good whack with the mallet. It broke away easily and I was able to remove the action. This action setup is very similar to a Savage small shank action. Now that it's ready for squaring up the action, I took measurements on the thread pitch and the depth between the bolt face and the face of the action, as well as the barrel lug. Now the barrel that I chose to replace this is a very thick Douglas 1 in 11 twist contour number 8 premium X barrel from brownnails.com. I bought this barrel for around 250 bucks. It's a traditional 6 groove rifling instead of the 5R. But this being the Premium X line, it's stated to be precision air gauge down to 1 one hundred thousandths of an inch as uniformity down the bore. Douglas barrels are known for accuracy. They've been one of the first barrel manufacturers out there. So I was excited to get my hands on one of these for the price I picked it up for. Unfortunately, I did not get any video footage on how the lathe was set up and chambering the rifle barrel and threading. I was being mentored by a good friend here, Mark from Action Gunsmithing. I have more barrels than I plan on doing, so later down the road, I'll film the whole process. On the muzzle end, it was threaded for 5 8 by 24 with a 90 degree crown. Usually what you see is an 11 degree crown, but according to Mark, a 90 degree crown works the best, so I decided to give it a try. The muzzle brake that I chose is a Harold's Precision Ford Port Tactical Muzzle Brake. It's a 1 inch diameter chromoly steel. I forgot to mention that the barrel is also chromoly. We started out at 1 inch and 190 thousandths and ended on the muzzle end at .993 at overall length of 28 and a half inches long. The muzzle brake was bored out 20 thousandths over the bullet diameter and then given a good polish. Overall, the muzzle brake blended in perfectly with the barrel. The action face was the only thing that needed to be squared, so this thing was easily put back together. The Mossberg ATR has a free floating bolt head just like a Savage, so in theory, we shouldn't need to do anything with the bolt either. To fit this big barrel down the stock, I found a socket roughly 1.2 inches in diameter and went to town with an 80 grit sandpaper. The barrel's completely free floated with lots of room. Now, I'm not done with the rifle stock. I plan on showing you guys how to do a DIY adjustable rear shoulder pad, as well as how to make a bag rider. I also plan on spraying the wooden stock with automotive clear coat to give it a good seal and that professional wooden stock shine. But for now, I added on the accessories, including the 20 MOA base and slapped on my SWFA scope. Overall, I think this thing came out pretty damn sweet. The total weight is 15.4 pounds as it sits right now, with a total overall length of 50 inches. As good as she looks, let's see how good she shoots. The first five shots are going to be shot with Federal Cheap XM-80CLs, 
The bullets are a 149 grain round ball. I just bore sighted the scope looking down the barrel. So these are the first five shots at 100 yards. The speed that I recorded with this factory 149 grain bullet was 3,364. I think that's a little bit high, but it was pretty consistent. The extreme spread was only 22, and for this ammo, that's not that bad at all. To my surprise, I measured a four shot group being just over half MOA. The first shot was actually the one right at 12 o'clock. If I was to include that into the group, the group size would be a 1.25. Like I mentioned, that was the first shot out of the barrel. I decided to try out some of my hand loads. This is a 168 grain ELD bullet loaded up with 43.6 grains of Varget. I did a jump test starting at 20 thousands off the lands and ending up at 5 thousands jammed. Four out of the five groups shot produced a sub MOA accuracy. I did pull one shot if you guys noticed on the bottom left target. Between the groups that were shot, I ran two wet patches of Hoppies number 9 followed up by three dry patches. This is something I typically don't do. Some refer to this as breaking in the barrel. I wanted to get a feel for how smooth the bore was. To my surprise, the first shot to the last shot had the same amount of resistance when I pushed the jag through. Overall, the results that I'm getting so far have me excited. Like I mentioned, I wanted to build a budget rifle starting out with a $180 rifle. I spent $250 on the barrel, $8 for the 3 8 steel rod for the cheek riser, $50 bucks for the muzzle break, and 200 bucks for the gunsmith work and mentoring. Overall, the total build of this using household materials and some skill and labor ended up being $688. In my opinion, a sub $700 custom rifle with the results that it's producing as of right now is pretty hard to come by and pretty hard to beat. Later on down the road, I plan on doing a little bit more upgrades, so the price may cost a little bit more. I'm trying to keep this rifle built under $1,000. Well, folks, that's all I got for now. Comment below, let me know what you guys think of this build. If you guys are thinking about tackling this project, go ahead and do so. It doesn't take much skill. And like I mentioned, you can take an ordinary rifle and make it to something extraordinary. Well folks, stay tuned, stay safe, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Also, as a quick announcement, for those who are looking to get into reloading, or just started, or perhaps you've been reloading and wondering how I do my process, I plan on showing my complete process from start to finish, from brand new brass to small groups. So if you guys are interested, stick around for that. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way you won't miss any of these videos. Thanks for watching.